Hi, I'm Rohan Chakravarti. I'm a PhD student at the Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research in Germany and I study bats in the Himalayas for my PhD. So today I'm, I'm here to talk about bats and these are animals as you all know we, we love to hate bats. There's practically everybody in the, in, in the world uh, has some sort of a dislike for bats and this has been aggravated because of COVID-19 where where uh, the media has spread the news that bats are responsible for spreading COVID-19 and there's always that one uh, uncle in your WhatsApp group who would be spreading this propaganda message or uh, these fake news about how China has probably unleashed bats to spread COVID-19 all over the world. So it's become even more important for people like me who study bats to talk to, to, talk to the society about what bats really are and that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm going to talk about three key topics. Uh, first is why are bats special? The second is what's the link between bats and viruses? And the third is why do we need bats? So the first, so let's start with the first one. Why are bats special? Uh, first of all, bats are extremely diverse. They are one of the, they, after rodents, they are the most diverse group of mammals in the planet. Uh, the whole, in the whole world, there are over 1400 species of bats and in India, we have 128 species of bats which make up 30% of all the mammal diversity in, uh, in, the, in India. So that's a huge number. And um, then the second point is uh, their diet. Now this is not something unique, but I'm going to refer to this uh, later on in, uh, in this talk, in this uh, video. Uh, so there, there are two main groups of bats. Uh, one group eats uh, fruits, so they eat fruits, they sip nectar, they pollinate flowers, etc. And uh, the other group, uh, a very large group at that, predominantly eats insects of different kinds. But then there are also carnivorous bats uh, that eat lizards, mice, fish, or even other small bats. And there are also blood uh, sucking bats so there actually are vampire bats in the world they're not found in india they're found in south america but the point to note is that vampire bats do not drink human blood they predominantly drink blood from cattle from pigs from deer or from birds so humans have nothing to worry about it and that's a, an absolute myth when people say that all bats drink blood absolutely not now, uh, then the third point is uh, what makes them unique is their ability to see the world through sound. Now, echolocation, as we call it uh, as is in science, um, is not restricted to bats. It's not unique to bats. There are whales and dolphins that also do it, but bats do it a little differently. And that's what makes them so interesting. And you don't need to look way beyond uh, your own neighborhood to, uh, to appreciate that. If you look at a street light at dusk you'll see bats swooping uh, in and out of the of the street light now uh, they're hunting insects and you can see the speed at which they're doing it so when bats fly they emit sound and these sound waves go to different directions and they come back to the bats um, and in split seconds less than three to four milliseconds not even seconds milliseconds these bats make so many mathematical and physical calculations that we would certainly be able to do only within the scope of a PhD in four to five years. But bats, for bats, this is a way of life. They just send sound around and in lightning fast speed, they process the information to figure out whether it's an animal in front of them, whether it's, a, it's prey, whether it's a predator or an object in front of them. And that's how they, uh, a lot of bats go around flying in the night sky. Now, the fourth point is their immune system and their physiology. And by physiology, I mean the internal machinery of a bat, how it functions and how it helps a bat survive. Uh, so if you, if you look at those small bats that you see flying around at dusk, they're barely five to six grams. They're very small. Uh, you would assume that they live like mice. They would they breed fast and then they die within one to two years, but that's not the case. The small five to six gram bats actually live longer than a tiger. They live for 20 to 30 years. So, and that all boils down to their physiology, to the way their body functions. It allows them to 
live much longer than is expected of their body size and that's very very unique to bats the secret to longevity except for humans which are not very big but we live quite long lives except for humans bats are one of those animals that hold the secret to a long life now uh, from that leads us uh, that leads us uh, to the second topic which is about what's the link between bats and viruses now again we focus on their physiology for that to uh, to find an answer for that and the physiology of a bat like i said is very very different and uh, bats are the only flying and flying mammals which means that they, perf- they they have to function differently from other mammals they use up a lot of energy in their flight yet live a long life now the the power of flight makes the the immune system of bats work very differently from other mammals it produces a lot of internal heat which is why some scientists believe that they their body from inside starts mimicking a fever and a fever is uh, uh is a body's response to viral infections or to infections in general so that means that uh, so some scientists believe that because bats produce so much internal heat they can fend off viruses but the other uh, there's another uh, hypothesis which talks about their dna repair mechanisms and their dna repair mechanisms are very different from other animals which again allow them to live with a lot of viruses so uh, do bats carry a lot more viruses than other animals we don't know that for sure there are some scientists who believe that bats do carry disproportionately higher number of viruses than other animal groups but then there's also a group of scientists which believes that uh, it's all about numbers we're talking about 1400 species of bats versus for comparison i'll take a group like wild cats which are 40 to 50 species so if you compare the viruses in a group with 1400 species versus 40 species you are bound to find more viruses here but that does not mean that these animals carry disproportionately higher number of viruses so this is a debate this is an ongoing debate backed by science from both sides and we don't know that for sure uh but given that bats carry viruses and in the example of SARS-CoV-2 uh if it is found that bats uh that the origin of the virus lies in bats should we be killing them absolutely not because uh in the case of covid-19 and a lot of previous disease outbreaks that we've seen uh we need to focus on transmission more than the origin so what happens is even if a bat is the host of a particular virus uh, a lot of times it does not give the virus directly to humans come on let's uh, let's be clear about that we uh, there are bats all around us they've been around us for centuries but we don't really come in contact with bats very often they they are very good at keeping the at minding their own business uh so a lot of times what happens is the virus goes from bats into another animal which is called an intermediate host and from there the virus jumps into human beings and in previous outbreaks and in this one probably what we're seeing is that this intermediate host tends to be an animal that is either extensively hunted extensively traded or extensively farmed which means that human activities are what brings us in contact are uh, i mean human activities bring us in contact with uh these intermediate hosts and uh habitat uh, deforestation and habitat fragmentation these are activities that bring forest dwelling bats in contact with other animals and then and also with humans so for most of these disease outbreaks it's our own activities that are to be blamed where and that's where that's how we i mean we're changing this world so fast that we are coming in contact with new and new viruses from various animal sources and uh, so there's absolutely no reason to kill those animals i mean there's absolutely no reason to blame animals for these outbreaks now uh, we are killing bats everywhere and we are somewhere forgetting the third topic that we're going to talk about we need bats why do we need bats now bats are extremely important animals like i said there are two main groups 
there's a group that eat fruits. Now, this fruit eating group of bats, they also pollinate flowers of various species of uh, rainforest trees. Now, some of these are extremely commercially important. For example, in Mexico, the agave plant, which is uh, from which uh, we produce tequila, that is a bat pollinated plant. In Southeast Asia, durian, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, is again uh, again needs to thank bats for uh, for pollinating the flowers. And um, in in the Amazon, this is uh, particularly true of Southeast uh, of of South America, uh, that a lot of uh, plants depend on pollination by bats. So Amazon was burning for so many months last year, and now if there's any sign that the forest is regenerating, or if uh, 20 years down the line, the forest comes back to life. It's probably because bats are so actively pollinating and dispersing the seeds of uh, rainforest trees. The, in India, we don't know a lot about this, but there's one key uh, plant or one key ecosystem that depends heavily on bats and that's mangroves. A lot of mangrove plants are pollinated by bats and mangroves, as you know, and mangroves have demonstrated this Time and again, they are the most effective barrier against cyclones. So people living along the coasts uh, are protected because of mangroves, which in turn spread because of bats. Then there are insect-eating bats, which eat pest insects in rice, con rice plantations, corn plantations, uh, cotton, and various other economically important plantations, probably even tea plantation, which is the most important cash crop of our region. And um, they also eat mosquitoes, so we have to thank bats if we're sleeping peacefully through this lockdown. So these are these are the main uh, the reasons why bats are important. And irrespective of that, we still categorize them as pests. And globally, bats are facing a lot of threats in the form of habitat fragmentation, um, wind farms, which are emerging as a, as a global. Uh, uh, killer of bat populations and uh, also diseases in fact I mean we talk about diseases coming from bats to humans but there are uh, also diseases that are transmitted to bats from humans uh, I mean by people moving around different places for example the white nose syndrome in North America which is killing millions of bats every winter so uh, but in India, the situation is very different. We don't even know what threats bats are facing. They're so poorly studied. We don't know enough about their ecology. Then that's really limiting our potential to protect them. And that really is limiting our ability to pull them out of the vermin list, which they have been categorized in since 1972 when the Wildlife Protection Act was made. And with this, I uh, my final message here is that uh, is a message that comes from an organization called Bat Conservation International and it says that cuteness should never be a measure of conservation and that's very true for bats because uh, globally bats are not thought of as cute animals they are not they are, they are among the most disliked animals but they have a role to play they have a role to play in the ecosystem they have a role to play in our own lives and that for that, we should value and conserve bats. Today, the biggest threat that bats face is their bad reputation. It's a big problem, it's a very widespread problem, but it has a simple solution. That means it, we need to educate more people. And this is not a job restricted to researchers like me. Even people who are, who are listening to this have a big role to play in spreading the word. It starts from your own family and friends and we need to educate uh, people that bats are actually one of the most important animals in the world today. Thank you.